Good morning, good afternoon, everyone here. Uh, we're starting hearing number 10 of the 182nd period of sessions, which will deal on the uh, progress and challenges in the implementation of the Extraordinary Forensic Identification Mechanism in Mexico. It's a hearing that the commission decided to grant ex officio. I would like to welcome everyone here the uh, civil society organizations, the representatives of the state, the group Extraordinary Forensic Identification Mechanism, and also the representative of the Office of the High Commissioner um, in Mexico, Mr. Diego Fernandez. It's a pleasure to have you all here at this hearing. My name is Antonia Urrejola. I am the president of the Commission and Rapporteur for Memory, Truth, and Justice. And I am joined by first Vice President Julissa Mantilla and by Commissioner Esmeralda Arosemena de Troitiño, a Rapporteur for Mexico. We also have the Executive Secretary of the Commission, Tania Renom. And I can't see the rest of the team. I apologize if someone else is here. But of course, we have the entire team of the Executive Secretariat following these issues. Our team in Mexico that you know so well, I see Mauricio Rizzo, Piero, and the rest of the team, both working on uh, the issues that will be discussed at this hearing and the entire team of the Executive Secretariat that make it possible for us to meet here and the interpreters, I would like to thank them all. You will see on your screens that there's a little timer. I hope you can see it. I can't, but if you can see it, that's what's important today. I'm on an iPad, uh, so I can't see the timer. And what should be there that I, oh, oh Commissioner Stuardo Rallon is here as well. I apologize, Commissioner. I can't see uh, everyone on my iPad. Uh, there's a timer, I, ho I hope you can see, I cannot see it. That timer will let you know how long everyone have to use the floor. I ask you to stick to the timer. We will have several presentations here and it's very important for everyone to respect that. First of all, we will listen to the civil society for 20 minutes. And while they use it, uh, while they, you speak, I ask you please to introduce yourselves. After that, we will listen to the state's representatives. Please introduce yourselves as well. Then we will have a special um, time for the representative of groups of the coordinators of the MEIF for 10 minutes. It's very important to listen to you. And after that, we will listen for seven minutes to the representative of the High Commissioner for Human Rights. After that, the commissioners will ask some questions. And after that, we will give the floor to you for the remaining time. Having said this, first of all, I will give the floor to the civil society organizations. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Lucia de Los Angeles Diaz. I am the mother of Luis Guillermo Lagunas Diaz, who was kidnapped in 2013 and then disappeared. I work with the um, De La Cruz Collective because of the lack of action of the state. I didn't have a choice and I have worked for the national, with the National Movement for Disappeared Persons in Mexico for the same time I have been working with the collective. We would like to thank you for the space you are giving us, um, the UN, the commission, everyone who are part of the mechanism and authorities for us it's a very important space. We would like to thank you for this opportunity to present our concerns with the uh, activation of the extraordinary mechanism, extraordinary forensic identification mechanism. 
since day one, it was uh, extremely important for me for this mechanism to work because our collective had been doing forensic work. We have rescued 369 bodies that were in these illicit uh, or um, unknown conditions. We would like to return them to their families. Unfortunately, we have only managed to identify about 30 bodies out of all of these that bodies that we, out of our own work, managed to find. It's very important for our movement and for the work of the mechanism for the commission to continue to monitor the, the work of the mechanism because we fear that a simulation might take place as has happened in other places, in, in other situations. So for us, it's very important to have the commission at every stage of this work because the, um, we haven't seen the mechanism work yet. It's something we've been yearning for. We've been working on it for three years and still we are empty handed. On behalf of the movement, we will now listen to Mariano Machain, who will talk about the update of the mechanism. Then uh, we will listen to a breakdown of the challenges by Jose Ugalde, the initiatives and the proposals, which will be presented by Grace Fernandez. And afterwards, Natalia Cordero will be um, presenting the commitments and requests we have in this fight, because we hope um, change will finally occur. We would like to see an operational MEIF. We would like to uh, translate all of our work into actual actions. Thank you so much for the space. Let's move on to Mariano. Thank you. Good morning. I'm Mariano Machain from uh, Serapaz one of the organizations that join the movement for uh, disappeared persons in Mexico. My objective here is to talk about the progress that has taken place in these past 21 months since the last public hearing on this issue. The most important uh, piece of progress we see is that there is now a coordinating group for the mechanism, which is already operating. It's seven experts in forensic identification and other relevant areas for forensic identification. These are seven persons with a renowned um, history, both nationally and internationally. We Another progress is that the definition of the seven profiles worked and also the selection project. It was participatory and transparent and public. We also wish to uh, say that the independence and the autonomy of this mechanism was strengthened by the role uh, that was uh, taken on by the UNFPA, which is in charge of the coordinating group in terms of accountability, operations, and a higher um, agreement situation. The state has allocated a budget for 2021 and 2022 for this mechanism, of course. And once again, as Lucia was saying, this commission's role in this process is very important as a monitor and advisor, as well as the role of the other two uh, organizations that are working on this, the CICR and the Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights. As in all processes of institutional construction, we see progress, of course, but we would like to say that there are remaining challenges in this process of the construction of the extraordinary mechanism. And for that, I will give the floor to Jose Ugarte. Thank you very much. Hi, everyone. It's um, a pleasure to, to be here. Thank you for giving us this space. I would like to greet you all. And as Mariana was saying, I'm Jose Ubalde Mejia from the um, Collective for uh, Disappeared Persons, Justicia. 
in these processes, it's always a big, there are always several challenges. And the biggest one right now faced by this mechanism is to uh, coordinate and create or, or to sign agreements with the uh, general prosecution and the uh, state's prosecutors. This is one of the most important thing. And that's the major, um, the, big, the biggest challenge for our mechanism. I think that we need to be together to exert that pressure to reach this agreement so that the mechanism can operate. Remember, there are over 52,000 52, bodies in the possession of the state. And this way, we could help them get back home. We need to allocate a budget, a budget that is specifically labeled and allocated for this mechanism that won't delay its work so that it will be free in the use of its resources to carry out its mandate. We need to ensure the uh, freedom of the work of the ME. I am um, e, e, I sorry without risks or retaliations against its members, as was the case of Marcela Curati, Mercedes Dorati, uh, who are human rights defenders who have worked closely with this mechanism. There's a need for the creation of a registry and the tools that are con contemplated in the law because we do have the law but let's remember that many states don't have the minimum resources to give access to the work of this mechanism this is something we need to work for and it's a responsibility of the state and of everyone here so that they will have these resources What can I say? I think, uh, well, we were chosen as speakers, but remember that there are over 90,000 families and over 52,000 bodies in the possession of the state. This is a national emergency and a call to the Mexican government and with the help of the Inter-American Commission who has been there since the beginning of this uh, mechanism because we need to accelerate this process to get the results that families need so desperately. There are, there's no excuse the state can present for its failure to provide the resources and the, um, to, the, the resources to do this work. This crisis goes beyond any sort of excuse or pretext. We need that information so that families can uh, finally get some relief because we are the ones facing that lack of uh, sensibility, that lack of transparency, because this makes this situation cannot be tolerated anymore. That is why we make this urgent demand for uh, the work of this mechanism so it can carry out its mandate. I think uh, this is all for me. Thank you very much. I will now give the floor to Grace. Thank you. Good morning. I'm Grace Fernandez. I'm looking for my brother, Dan Jeremes Fernandez. A force disappeared in uh, Guajila. It's going to be 14 years since he will disappear very soon. For many of these families, this has been a terrible search. And this mechanism in the past three years has been one of the biggest bets for the search. Of course, what we need is to find them alive. But forensic search is also important. That is why this mechanism needs to work because we need an answer about who they are and we need to have 
the possibility to return these over 52,000 people. Their families are looking for them. They are waiting for them. That is why we are so concerned because several days ago, we heard about this intention of the federal government to launch next year initiatives to generate the National Institute for Human Identification. Even though it might be a useful tool to face this challenge, which is collaborating between the, the prosecutor's office, because they are the ones who um, are custodying these uh, bodies, we do not believe this is the next stage of the solution because the mechanism hasn't even started working yet. The coordinating group was formed a couple of months ago. They are still on a planning stage and it needs support. We believe that deviating the attention, the force, the political power towards the creation of this new law and this new institution might make us lose even more time that we need for the mechanism to start working. We are worried that they are moving forward without consulting with the victims, without meeting with the movement to know what's the point of this institute. I'd like to say that three years ago, when we started negotiating with the current government for this mechanism, it was an initiative of the movement, creating a law to create this national institute. It's what we wanted, of course. Nevertheless, the political conditions weren't there, even with a new administration, with the majority in Congress, and this dynamic of let's rebuild the country. But we couldn't really see a political um, capability to start this pro process. That's why we decided to bet on the mechanism. And we find it very concerning that we are seeing less and less conditions nowadays. And this will dilute our efforts. This has happened to us. We don't want the mechanism to be just another initiative, another effort, wasted effort, by the families who have fought with, with because we have left aside our anguish and our pain to build. We have seen with horror in the past few days this um, article that talks about um, central ADN, ADN because it's uh, actually using the pain. They say that the genetic information that was so hard for us to build without a national database, it cannot be at the disposal of any private citizen for whatever they want that it's not what we provided that information for, which is identifying the thousands of deceased who have a name, but the state continues not to collaborate to return their names and send them back home. That's all for now. Now Natalia will speak. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, commissioners, delegates of the state of Mexico. My name is Natalia Cordero. I'm a researcher at Fundar. I'm also a member of the technical team that supports the national movement for disappeared persons in Mexico. Um, taking into consideration the absence of the secretary, Ms. Encinas, uh, who had sometimes presided over uh, the secretariat and taking into consideration what my colleague said, Grace, we hope that he, his absence is only a question of a schedule and not a message that our mechanism is no longer a priority. I now would like to explain the petitions and the requests that we make for the delegation of the state of Mexico and before Inter-American Commission so that the implementation of the mechanism is effective and so that we can achieve the mandate of this mechanism that is the identification of 52,000 people. All the 
we all therefore request promoting the adoption of a framework agreement of collaboration for identification of people between the mechanism, the forensic office, the national conference of the public prosecutor office and the forensic services that do not depend from uh, on public prosecution offices. We hope that the framework agreements can be implemented towards the end of 2022. Also, we request the state of Mexico to take the necessary measures to guarantee uh, a sufficient budget for the extraordinary mechanism of forensic identification so that we can acquire the infrastructure necessary for the functioning of the mechanism in 2022 and 2023 and following years in order to achieve uh, the outcomes of the mechanisms and to overcome the crisis that exists in Mexico. Also, we would like for the state to review the compliance of the commitments along the period of sessions and um, that they took during the period of sessions with, you know, of the IACHR. And also, also with regard to ordinary forensic services and their strengthening, we also that they issue the pending records Especially, we consider that it's highly important that there is an immediate publication of the national database of forensic data and the record of persons who have died and have been identified, since that is one of the fundamental databases and records in order to um, make the identification activities effective. Also, we request joint participation in the application of the national program of exhumations of the Office of the Public Prosecutor with the participation of the mechanisms together with civil society organizations and the families of the victims. Also, we request the strengthening of the ordinary services or ordinary forensic services by increasing their budget, but also guaranteeing the resources so that it could have a stronger structure so that they can improve their human resources and technological resources. We also would like to make some specific requests or petitions before the Inter-American Commission in order to guarantee the monitoring of the petitions and the commitments made at this hearing. We request the commission to review the compliance of the commitments made in this period of sessions and in the coming periods of sessions. We also request the American Commission to apply a specific monitoring mechanism for this case and to provide technical assistance to the state of Mexico for the creation of the framework agreement regarding forensic services. We also request the establishment of a working schedule to promote the implementation of the extraordinary mechanism of forensic identification, including public hearings and monitoring and annual hearings. Without further ado, we would like to thank you for monitoring this situation and for making this issue relevant. We know that is very relevant in humanitarian terms. Thank you very much. Thank you. Sorry, I'm using my iPad today. Thank you. Civil society organizations. Now I would like to give the floor to the representatives of the state of Mexico. I see that Ambassador Luz Elena is here. We were together at the Permanent Council. And I'm seeing if we have also the authorities. We're here. Uh, I was going to say that. We have Christopher Vagina, civil society organizations who are mentioning you and the delegation of Mexico told me that you were going to be here. I would like to welcome the state of Mexico and I would like to give the floor for 20 minutes. Thank you. Good afternoon, commissioners. 
And also I would like to greet the representatives of civil society organizations, those who are following uh, the hearing remotely. And I also would like to greet my colleagues from the state of Mexico representation. We would like to thank the Inter-American Commission for this hearing to discuss one of the most important topics and issues for the state of Mexico. We have listened very carefully to all the members of civil society organizations who have spoke today. They are uh, representatives of the efforts uh, to overcome this challenge that affects the Mexican society as a whole. We would like to recognize you for all your efforts, for all the energy, so that this is one of the most important priorities of the state of Mexico. As I, we were saying, uh, we have Luz Elena Baños, the ambassador of Mexico, also Carla Cantana Osura from the Commission for the Search of Disappeared Persons. We also have the staff members of the Human Rights Secretariat of the Government of Mexico. We have also Ms. Soto, that is the technical secretary of the ministry. That is also Alvaro Martinez, that is a specialized prosecutor on behalf of the Prosecution Office of Potosí. And also we have the representative of the Conference of Justice Operators. I would like to introduce uh, each of our colleagues will introduce the next colleague that will be presenting. And after the hearing, the foreign minister will make some final comments and then we will give the floor to the Inter-American Commission. I would like to introduce now Dr. Carla Quintano Sura, that is director of the National Commission of, for Search of Disappeared Persons. Good morning, all of you first, taking into consideration the movement, the reference made by the movement, we would like to say that because of personal reasons, the secretary, Ms. Lencin, Mr. Lencinas is not here today, but he told me that on behalf of the secretariat, uh, to give you the following message. It's important to recall that the Mexican government has recognized a crisis in terms of disappearance and the forensic crisis since May 2019 during the period of sessions of the Inter-American Commission in 2019. Uh, we had a meeting at the time with the family members of the victims. We started to discuss the possibility of creating the mechanism. And then we have a meeting on July the, 3rd, the 30th 2019, and then in May, uh, and sorry, in December 2019, we had another meeting with Inter-American Commission in order to present the agreement for the creation of the extraordinary mechanism for forensic identification, who was approved or adopted by the National Commission on the search for disappeared persons. We would like to say that since then, since then, we have worked jointly to build this extraordinary mechanism and forensic identification. And this mechanism uh, has been built together with the participation of family uh, members of the victims, with, together with civil society organizations and with the support of federal agencies, including the Foreign Relations Secretariat, the Justice Secretariat, the Office of the Public Prosecutor, the Secretary of Government, uh, including their legal offices and also the National Commission for the Search of Disappeared Persons. Since the signing of the agreement, we had over 50 plenary meetings with all these institutions, agencies, and persons. And we have also dozens of working tables or working meetings with all of them. After the creation of the agreement on December the 5th, 2019, a follow-up committee was created. And it's important to recall that each part of the process has been built collectively. Each term, each word has been discussed and approved by all the parties. The monitoring committee has 14 members, including authorities, civil society members, and also family members of the victims who are disappeared. And as it was said, 
uh, we took into consideration the profile of the persons that were going to be the members of the committee. We chose the seven persons on behalf of uh, the victims, and we had also a specialist for the different aspects or areas, forensic experts, legal experts, etc. And we also, there was a concern that was discussed at the time that was how to guarantee the autonomy and independence of this coordinating group. We discussed whether there should be public officials or officials or people who did not, did not belong to the Mexican government. The state of Mexico signed an agreement with the United Nations and with the OACHR so that the government of Mexico provided the resources for the creation of uh, the High Commissioner's so office so that this office hired the seven members of the coordinating group. There was also after that, after the approval of all these decisions jointly, we conducted with the creation of the selection group. I will not talk about the details uh, that will be presented by the Office of the Public Prosecutor, Prosecution of the Republic, but there was also an agreement to decide on who should be a member of that group. We have a competition process for choosing the members of the coordinating group. Receive resumes from Peru, Argentina, Colombia, Ecuador, the United States, Canada, Spain, and Portugal, uh, with 240 candidates who applied for being members of this committee. And the Office of the Public Prosecution will be uh, discussing this election process. And on August the 30th this year, the coordinating group presented the seven profiles that would be members of that coordinating group. Then during an ordinary session in November this year, the coordinating group presented some of the progress they made. And also the coordinating group uh, was chosen to be a permanent member of the national system for the search of disappeared persons. And after that, we had several meetings with the coordinating group in that regard. And the government secretariat also would like to reiterate its commitment. As we have said, the budget was appointed by the government of Mexico through the government secretariat. And our commitment is grant funds. And we also would like to recall that Together with the strengthening of the mechanism, the government secretariat is making decisions and taking measures to improve forensic capacities across the country by providing over $60 million to local offices. And a part of this money has been appointed to increase forensic capacities such as the Coahuila Identification Center and the San Luis de Potosí Center. Also in Tamaulipas, there will be a new center. We have also another in Mochacan, in Jalisco, Veracruz, and also the mobile labs in Sonora. For the Mexican government and the government secretariat, it's very important that together with the strengthening of the mechanism, national capacities are created to fight this forensic crisis that we are facing. Now I would like to give the floor to the Special Prosecution of Human Rights of the Office of the Public Prosecutor of the Republic. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning to all. I would like to greet all the families, all the representatives of civil society organizations, the members of the Inter-American Commission, and also all our colleagues from the federal government and the representative of San Luis Potosí. Uh, in our office, the public prosecutor office, we have been committed to the mechanism 
Uh, this includes the expert commission and two areas of this human secret, uh, human rights prosecution office, especially everything that has to do with psychosocial support and also the specialized prosecution office for disappeared persons. But we believe that it's important that the National Conference of Justice Prosecution uh, takes the floor, Ms. Soto, because she represents the different public prosecution offices across the country that are working with that mechanism. Ms. Soto, you have the floor. Thank you, public prosecutor. Good morning, commissioners, and all those who are joining us this morning. The serious crisis faced by the Mexican state in terms of disappeared persons and the work for identifying those persons require extraordinary efforts. The creation of that mechanism is an example of the joint work between civil society and the government. Due to the request of the family members of disappeared persons in this country and after the public hearing with the Inter-American Commission in 2019, between May and November 2019, we held several meetings with family members, civil society organizations, international organizations, and federal authorities with the aim of creating the extraordinary mechanism of forensic identification. In our prosecution office and in the different prosecution offices across the country that are represented by the technical secretariat of the National Conference of Justice Prosecution and the San Luis Potosí offices, we have presented we have participated in the different meetings with the different organizations and authorities to promote the creation of this mechanism. In December 2019, the creation of the mechanism was approved. This adoption was published and was um, made public during the public hearing. And this mechanism was defined as an extraordinary multidisciplinary and autonomous mechanism that will conduct the expert searches and those bodies who have not been identified. Taking into consideration those multiple meetings, we tried to reach consensus to see how we could overcome the forensic crisis that our country is facing. As a result of those meetings, we chose the experts of the coordinating group of the mechanism. Their work together with the public prosecutor office um, has allowed for the analysis of the operating schemes. And the public prosecutor office has provided them with the necessary information for the development of their work. It's important also to consider that the plenary also requested the creation of the follow-up mechanism committee that includes civil society organizations and different uh, groups and organizations. The follow-up or monitoring committee included seven members and the different federal authorities at the judicial level participated in the evaluation of the resumes of over 200 candidates. The selection of the final list of candidates included 20 candidates. It included a competency-based exam and also the evaluation of each of the candidates. Also, we prepare a questioning matrix for the interviews of those candidates. Also, we contributed to developing these interviews and we finally chose the members of that coordinating monitoring group. The responsibility of that group is to coordinate and monitor the activities of the mechanism. The mechanism will conduct different multidisciplinary expert searches and reports on those bodies who have not been identified or of those persons whose identity has not been recognized by applying the Inter-American standards, national protocols, and international protocols that include the best practices in the matter, together with the guidelines according to the constitutional and legal framework. And we are going also to 
observe the different protocols and mechanisms established by the national um, agency for disappeared persons, the Office of the Public Prosecutor, and any of the members of the National Conference of Justice Prosecutors could uh, will approve the collaboration guidelines under the framework of collab of the uh, or under the framework of the agreements achieved or met uh, to develop the mechanism. We have listened to the concerns of family members, and we would like to tell them that the different justice bodies are paying especially attention to the actions conducted by the MIF to achieve the goals of that mechanism. And therefore, we are going to provide all the necessary capacities through different coordination agreements in order to make this mechanism expedite. Also, I would like to report that the Technical Secretariat of the National Conference of the Justice Prosecutors met in October this year with Eva Cortes Morales, that is a member of the coordinating group of the mechanism. And she was sent a draft project of collaboration that includes the minimum content that should be included in the framework agreements to be held between the prosecution offices in order to allow for the different initiatives and activities related to the mechanisms and also everything that had to do with evidence collection. Also, the coordinating group of the mechanism are committed to sending observations and to prepare the final draft of these guidelines. And we are going to present these guidelines next year in order to start to work with this model of agreement so that this agreement is signed and that this promotes the correct functioning of the mechanism together with prosecution offices. This mechanism allows for reducing the high figures of unidentified bodies because the work will also support the work of forensic labs in the country. I thank you for your attention this morning. This is all, commissioners. Thank you very much. Would anyone else from the state like to use the floor? Yes, thank you, Madam President. I will give the floor back to you. And if that's okay, we would like to use uh, the two extra minutes for the replies. Okay, then I will give the floor to uh, the mem a member of the uh, Extraordinary Forensic Identification Mechanism. You're gonna have 10 minutes. Muchas gracias. Thank you very much, everyone. Representatives of the uh, groups of the civil society, um, members of the Inter-American Commission, representatives in Mexico of the UN, and the UNFPA, representatives of the state, we would like to thank you for your invitation. And we believe it is fundamental to have the um, technical assistance and the follow-up work of the commission. And we would like to join the request of the civil society to um, continue to receive your assistance. A colleague and I will present on our perspective on the challenges and uh, progress we've made in the past three months. In the context of the crisis of violations to human rights and one of its most painful expressions, which is forced disappearances, family members said at this commission on May 2019 that they needed to identify thousands of people and that was part of their right to uh, search and they requested for the creation of this mechanism. You already know about this. This was described by the civil society and the state, but I would like to present my colleagues from the coordinating group of the mechanism. They are here with us, Alan Robinson and Yadira Reina. They are specialists in forensic anthropology and archeology, span Jairo Vivos and Ms. Rincon. And my colleagues, um, Sharon Viseles, 
a specialist in international cooperation and myself i am a specialist in psychosocial attention and mr cortez a specialist in legal assistance this multidisciplinary um makeup of the group is essential to ensure the rights of the families to comply with our mandates to cooperate with institutions to create plans and programs for human identification and to ensure the participation of uh, the international community in our work the coordinating group is located within the un system this is very important because it ensures our autonomy our and our unbiasedness and we started with the um, assistance of the UNFPA, as we've already mentioned. In these months, we have received important information about the forensic backload and its causes, among them that the uh, violence has exceeded the capabilities of the state um, in terms of identification, methodology, and resources. We have also found that the backlog is not distributed in a uniformist manner. That is why it, we need a differentiated model to understand the status of the information of persons who have disappeared or anti-mortem information and post-mortem information, as well as the database that will allow us to detect the bottlenecks or the hurdles on each state. Also, the lack of uh, decent and systematized conditions for the safekeeping of the bodies has uh, revictimizing effects on family members because the lack of traceability for them is like a second disappearance. In the first three months of work, we have also learned of experiences that show that even though it is difficult to identify the bodies, it is possible. These experiences uh, come from uh, the uh, forensic project in Guerrero, the um, forensic project in Tamaliquas, the comprehensive plan from La Guapota in Veracruz, which includes best practices on the participation of families, uh, the comprehensive unit of medical and forensic services in Veracruz, and the construction of forensic centers in some jurisdictions. And all of the, as these efforts show uh, the capabilities of our work at a local level and of the implementation of coordination mechanisms between families and uh, authorities. I will give the floor to Yadira Reina. Good morning, everyone. We would like to say that our the co coordinating group will be presenting in January our working plan for 2022. But we would like to share that we will be focusing on three actions, setting up the first uh, forensic and data analysis group to determine the status of disappeared persons. Uh, with this analysis, we want to set up working teams for uh, our work with a collaboration with uh, public prosecutor's office offices. We will work with uh, forensic and non-forensic pre-requirements. Uh, the second item of this plan would be advancing on the agreements for our collaboration with the public prosecutor and with uh, local offices to uh, collaborate with them and sign agreements with them. And thirdly, to design and implement mechanisms to ensure the right to free active, substantive and permanent participation of families, collectives and uh, organizations in the creation of the working plans of our mechanism. With that in mind, we carried out participation processes, as well as the psychosocial attention mechanism and the creation of uh, a special protocol. The coordinating group has identified these challenges. So we uh, request the collaboration of all authorities involved, as well as of the active participation of families, collectives, and civil society organizations. First, we consider that it is fundamental to achieve a common understanding of the dimension of the forensic crisis and of the uh, long effort it will entail, as well as how to work on the methodologies to address the backload and how to restitute the bodies to the families. Identifying thousands of disappeared persons who requires um, long commitment that will only be achieved through 
including transnational commitments as well as uh, budget resources to sustain this. The agreement for the creation of our mechanism, as we mentioned, is to perform um, interdisciplinary analysis in the case of human remain, remains that have not been identified, that were recovered and are in the custody of the authorities. That is why we wish to insist on the importance of underlining that it is very important to comply with this. And for this, it is very important to uh, work with the authorities, and we hope this will go on and become stronger as soon as possible in this uh, general basis for collaboration that we are uh, working on in order to solve the um, problem of identification and to bring relief to those who seek their missing relatives. The mechanism should also be a part of the projects and initiatives generated by the Mexican state in terms of human identification to care for forensic backlog. The coordinating group knows that there is a large volume of data related to unidentified disappeared persons. Many of them are disarticulated, and we believe it is very important for the mechanism to have access to all the databases and lists in whatever format, because only in that way will the, me will the mechanism be able to um, do its work. One of the main challenges to address the forensic crisis is to train specialized um, personnel in human identification through the development and expansion of university programs and of um, improving working conditions, addressing the risks and the needs of this work, the participation of families, collectives, and family and organizations is fundamental to sustain the efforts for the identification of thousands of unidentified missing persons. This is necessary to get to the information that will allow us to identify the remains, but it is also a right that must be acknowledged by all the stakeholders in the identification. Also, because of the technical complexity implied in the identification processes and the psychosocial impact on victims, it is necessary to train through um, psychosocial attention and notifying and delivering the bodies back to their families. We appreciate at the mechanism uh, the work of the families and collectives who trust this mechanism. And once again, we repeat our commitment to assist in the search and identification of pe persons who have disappeared who were deprived of their life so that they will return in a decent manner to their families and while addressing the um, right to truth and justice. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your participation. We will go on with the hearing. I would like to ask the representatives of the UN, Mr. Maldonado, you can speak for seven minutes. Thank you very much. Good morning. I would like to greet the authorities, the Inter-American Commission, the state, representatives from the civil society, families. It is an honor to take part of this public hearing of the commission called Progress and uh, Challenges in the implementation of the MEIF. As the Mexican representative of the uh, High Commissioner for Human Rights, I will present information in an informal manner without being under oath on the uh, implementation of the mechanism. None of my comments should be considered a renouncement to the privileges um, granted by the 1996 convention. And I would like to say that my intervention is a product of a previous and sustained dialogue with the um, UNF PA, and I would like to thank the Inter-American Commission for their ex, uh, the invitation and the holding, ex official holding of this hearing, which is which shows its commitment to the mechanism with the effective participation of the state and the families. The process in which that defined 
the progress of the mechanism um, considered the creation of a group and choosing its members was part of a joint effort by the state, international organizations and families, of course. Uh, the Red Cross was part of it, the new FBA, our office, the commission, and the process for the creation of the mechanism was a landmark at the hearing of the uh, Inter-American Commission. And that is why the commission is interested in it. And not only the commission, but also all the uh, concerning institutes, because we all they all wish to work uh, in the same synergy. The importance and the complexity of this situation in Mexico calls for structural and constant attention and also proactive follow-up by the victims and the state because the idea is to reach tangible progress in the search for these disappeared persons and of course the prevention of new cases locating the disappeared persons must be based on the idea of finding them alive but if the victims lost their lives their bodies must be identified and to determine all the, inf the, inf the information available, uh, the causes, um, the situation in which they died, and the remains must be given back to their families as soon as possible. Unfortunately, this is a distant reality for thousands of people in Mexico. The uh, violence and the lack of preparation of the forensic services to do their work has led to a forensic crisis. And even though the contribution of extraordinary mechanisms seeks to strengthen the institutions of countries, in the case of Mexico, it is necessary to um, state how massive the situation is, because this has been a concern for many years now, and it has led to numerous international recommendations. Nevertheless, many of these recommendations have been disregarded while the situation became worse and worse. It is necessary to strengthen forensic services so their work is at the service of society and justice. They must be free of interference. They must be based on the highest standards, not only to face the disappearances, but also to ensure the investigation and the solution of other serious um, crimes like extrajudicial executions and uh, torture. So strengthening this is of the essence. While what I have said previously, can be solved with the mechanism and other work, they are also an opportunity for the victims and for the institutions to start working to address effectively thousands of cases of people who have deceased and are not, have not been identified. So that the hopes for the uh, mechanism can be fulfilled, we believe that the uh, collaboration and this position of the prosecutor's offices is very important, as well as human, financial, technological resources, and, the, and enough political will to ensure their sustainability, the active and effective participation of the families in all processes that are related to the identification, the um, assistance and the international cooperation to the mechanism and other mechanisms that are linked to this and uh, implementing the actual law about the issue and, and art the articulation of a national strategy for the identification of the remains. This hearing takes place weeks before um, sorry, uh, before its first, the, the first visit of the uh, commission of disappeared persons, and it distinguished the creation of the uh, mechanism. And it reminded everyone that this must be a priority in the fight against forced disappearances. At our office in Mexico, in collaboration with the UNFPAD, PM, sorry, um, we would like to continue accompanying this process to um, finally have a 
an effective strategy to find and identify these persons and to improve the operation of forensic services in Mexico. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Fernandez Maldonado. Now we will start with the participation of the Inter-American Commission. I would like to greet, first of all, Commissioner Esmeralda Rosemena, the country reporter. Thank you very much, Madam President. I would like to greet everyone. We don't have much time. I would like to greet everyone to use this minute. Thank you so much to the civil society, the movement of the family members. Uh, you've done so much. Also the representatives of the state because they are so many and the contribution of the UN representative because it allows us to focus uh, specifically on the meaning of this commitment for all of Mexico, setting up efficiently and swiftly this special mechanism. I would like to greet also the representatives of the UNFPID because their support is a warranty of this autonomy and this independence. I'm, there's a lot of information that we need to process as a commission. I would like to thank the work of the entire commission for this hearing that we um, are holding ex officio because of the importance of this issue. I would like to start with the request made at the beginning by the family members. The need to know, to understand this relationship, this connection between the public prosecutor's offices and the forensic services with the work that needs to start the mechanism right now, that it needs to develop its working plan, which of course is necessary, but it is vital to be clear on this connection between the public prosecutor's offices and the forensic services. In order for the mechanism to work, the state has presented some progress in terms of agreements. This uh, relationship between the pu public prosecutor's offices and the forensic services is strongly linked to the agreements that are necessary, the agreements that need to occur with the state's public prosecutors and their offices. We are hearing that this might happen next year. We hope we can have that detailed information so we can follow up on it because we believe that Without these agreements, the mechanism won't be able to start its work. That is why I would like to know, I would like to ask the coordinating group, and this is just to hear that about the challenge the coordinating group is seeing. When do you think, from your perspective, from your expertise and your commitment to this work, when do you think we could see your first forensic identifications in that action plan 
when do you think as an expert group, an interdisciplinary expert group, when do you think you could present the first identifications? I agree with what was said by the uh, High Commissioner's representative. And I have something to say, strengthening effectiveness, urgency, and sustainability of this mechanism. Thank you, Madam President. I know there's a lot of information that we might receive, maybe not now, but later uh, in written form. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Now I would like to give the floor to Commissioner Estado Rallon. Thank you, Madam President. First of all, I would like to greet all those who are here today. This includes civil society organizations and representatives of the state. I would like to react first by saying that taking into consideration the serious challenge and the situation of disappeared persons in Mexico, uh, it's it gives you a lot of hope to see a concrete action such as this extraordinary mechanism on forensic identification. I would like also to highlight the participation of authorities of different agents, agencies of the state who shows that there is a commitment to guarantee the implementation of this mechanism. Among the representatives of the state, uh, we learned about that the plan or the working plan is being initiated. And we know that the support of the prosecution offices to the forensic team and the technical team is going to be very important. I know that this is a challenge, especially the first stages of a mechanism that it's so important, but the commission will be monitoring through its different mechanisms uh, the implementation of the mechanism so that it's effective. And uh, we are going to be paying special attention to the situation of human rights, especially with regard to this matter, so that this mechanism proves effective. And so that family members uh, are relieved I would like to also highlight the participation included in the working plan so that the families and the organizations have a voice in this research or research and forensic identification mechanisms. I would like to congratulate all of you for this work and the commission will be monitoring the evolution of this mechanism. Thank you. Thank you, commissioner. I wanted to make some specific questions. And like my colleagues, I'd like to greet the representatives of the state and of civil society organizations, because this is a very complex effort to find a common roadmap ahead. I'd like to request the state more information regarding the participation of the organization, since organizations do not feel that they are truly involved. Second, the commission is interested in the administrative regulations, especially with regard to the hiring of forensic services, how the hiring of those services is regulated and how uh, that information and genetic information is protected. Also, we would like to know the, if there is any changes in the budget assigned to forensic services, if it was increased or not. And also, we would like to see how we can improve the dialogue between search parties, organizations, and state authorities. Again, I would like to bring civil society organizations and We would like for you to tell us other additional challenges that you can identify, including, for example, the role of women, because 
the searches are usually initiated by family members, usually by the mothers of the victims. That would be all on my side. Now I would like to give five minutes to each of the protests to continue. Uh, civil society organizations will start. And if there is any information that you cannot provide right now, you can send it later in writing to the Inter-American Commission. Civil society has the floor. Good morning, commissioners. I would like to greet all of you, especially uh, those who are here today in this hearing. My name is Humberto Guerrero. I'm human rights coordinator of one of the organizations. And with regard to the questions and the challenges that we are identifying as civil society are the following. One of the most important ones has to do with participation and the barriers that different groups face. Uh, some of the groups of victims face different barriers because of gender issues or because of the income level of those people or because of geographic criteria. It's difficult to guarantee the same level of participation for all the group of victims. So in general terms, that's a challenge that we have. And the state should guarantee in homogeneous participation of the group of victims. That is my answer to your question. And in the following five minutes, we would like to promote some commitments so that we can make progress after this hearing. First, uh, we would like to say that there, are some progress, there is some progress made regarding the collaboration aspects and the guidelines for collaboration to work together with prosecution offices. And um, you were talking about next year, but do we have a specific date? It would be good to have a draft of that collaboration uh, initiatives. And we would like to know when those collaboration guidelines could be shared with family members and with civil society organizations. We do believe in the dialogue that you have with the members of the coordinating group of the mechanism, but of course, family members and organizations are interested in uh, the effectiveness and the autonomous work of the mechanism so that the mechanism has all the tools that is ne that are necessary for the correct functioning of the mechanism. And it would be good to be able to move forward with that pending task during the first semester next year. Second request. Uh, would it be possible to have a commitment regarding budget? We do recognize that the National Commission of Search of Disappeared Persons had made all the efforts possible so that, that the, me the mechanism had budget. But we would like to have more information, especially for the Inter-American Commission, so that they know how the budget in Mexico is allocated. Uh, we believe that it's important that we have label or specifically allocated budget. The mechanism has a budget and the National Commission for the Search of Disappeared Persons has given its word, but now that budget is out of a bag of resources, but there is not a specifically appointed resources for the mechanism. For a task that will be long term, the best thing is to have a specific budget for the mechanism. And we would like to know if it's possible next year, at the beginning, to have a meeting with the Ministry of Economy and Public Credit so uh, they can let us know what is necessary to have that specific budget allocation for the mechanism. And finally, in general terms, we are concerned because we see that there are 
several actions in and human identification, for example, then they are run parallel to the mechanism for the create, for example, the creation of a genetic database, the creation of a national program. But we are concerned because they are not articulated, then they do not communicate with each other. So we need the state of Mexico to take measures so that all these actions do not create a duplication or a wasting of resources. We all want to make the most effective use of resources that is possible. So we would like to know from the state what you are doing to articulate all these actions in each of these programs that are run in parallel. And in order to be able to um, um, have a good conversation, we hope that Ms. Lens Mr. Lencinas is OK. And it would be ha good to have a meeting with the Undersecretary Lencinas to identify how we can articulate all these actions that are being conducted uh, in this matter. Thank you. Now I would like to give the floor to the state for five minutes. Thank you, commissioners. Also, I would like to thank all the agencies. I would like to give the floor to Dr. Carla Quintana so that she could reply the answers related to budget and some of the questions made by civil society organizations, especially everything that has to do with the public prosecution office and what they are doing. And that's why we would like to give the floor to Ms. Carla Quintana. I will be as brief as possible. I would like to start uh, from the ending. Regarding a meeting with Under Secretary Mr. Lencina, count on that. We can arrange a meeting for the coming days. Also, we will try to see if there is a possibility of having a meeting with the Ministry of Economy to identify if there could be a specific budget for the mechanism. I would like to repeat that although the budget is not specified or it's not level, uh, as we did in the past, uh, we hope that the budget could be sent to the office, the UFA and the OACHR as we did in previous years. And Regarding the question uh, made by Commissioner Mantilla, uh, we would like to say that the forensic budget is wide, is broad. The state of Mexico is a federate state or is a federal state. And most of the forensic services belong to the prosecution offices of the states and of the Republic. There are other forensic services that belong to other institutions as well. But we would like to say that there are funding from different sources for forensic services. At a federal level, for example, I think that the Office of the, uh, the Public Prosecutor could uh, provide more information for that. We have a public security aid fund in order to provide uh, more resources for forensic services if, ne if it's necessary. Then we have the support of the government secretariat uh, to promote forensic services because we need to strengthen the state capacities at different places across the country. And as it has been said by the coordinating group, one of the most important actions is the regional center of human identification. There is a project that was supported and promoted by the families of the victims for many years, and it has a large scale scope and has a differentiated scope for differentiated persons. So the issue of budget is wide and it goes beyond the mechanism. This doesn't mean that the MEP will not have the funds that are necessary, but the Mexican state wants to strengthen the national capacity in order to create new areas to be able to address this forensic crisis in a sustainable way together with extraordinary mechanism for forensic identification. With regard to the involvement of the families, uh, according to what was said by the movement, we have two different situations. 
On the one side, we have the involvement uh, regarding the creation of the mechanism. This included over 50 plenary meetings and over a dozen uh, working groups. And I would like to take this opportunity to say that we are working together with an international organization to facilitate this process. This is a way in which the MEF or the mechanism was created and how the coordinating group was created and the selection of people. And then we have a problem of involvement or participation according to the other party that has to do with the committee for the search of victims. We have created a national center for human identification. And the movement has said that there has been a proposal some years ago. Uh, if I'm not wrong, it was created by some groups and civil society organizations. And also, this was recommended by the Inter-American Commission on Human Rights in the country reports. It's been requested by the Committee Against Forced Disappearances since 2015. It has been requested by special rapporteurs on several occasions. They all have highlighted that the forensic crisis should include different initiatives, not only from a single area. We have discussed this and we are working to formulate or to prepare a proposal that takes into consideration all these aspects and elements that I have just mentioned. And this includes different meetings that we have held in recent years with the family members of disappeared persons. And this includes the creation of the mechanism and the coordinating group. Thank you, Dr. Quintana. We are reaching the end or the closing of this hearing. And I would like also to thank all of you again for participating in this meeting, also the state for their willingness to participate. And also I would like to thank the organizations for uh, um, allowing all the petitioners to have a voice. Sorry. Commissioner, I think that we could not have time to answer some of the questions regarding the National Conference and the Office of the Public Prosecutor. I just want to say that we have started our work with the coordinating group towards the end of October. We receive feedback until no, uh, December the 9th by the coordinating group, but we estimate that we are on time so that we can work and this and to have the general guidelines of collaboration during the first semester next year. One of the most important aspects that are being reviewed right now has to do with the quality uh, or the role of the coordinating group for the signing of those agreements. Um, since the funds are managed by the UN structure, so we need to take into consideration if those agreements need the support or the approval of the foreign ministry. These are all technical aspects that won't prevent these agreements from being signed. So we hope that we can really move forward with this next year. One of the concerns of the prosecution offices is the budget. The resources mentioned by Carla Quintana are ordinary resources that help strengthen in the ordinary capacities of the prosecution offices and that the intervention of the mechanism is a very specific intervention because it's long-term uh, body remainings or therefore they need a specific technical capacities, but we are working together with the different services of forensic services. Thank you for your answers, but we are running out of time. Maybe next time you can coordinate your meeting better or your intervention better, but I cannot give you more time because the civil society has five minutes. We are reaching the end of this hearing. The commission will continue supporting your work. We thank you for also coordinating your work with the universal system. And I would like to say that the work conducted by the Mexican rapporteur is supported by the work of the 
president of the commission and rapporteur for truth, memory and justice, Antonia Urrejola, that is ending her term at the commission. But without any doubts, she will continue to work and to commit. You know her, so I would like to give the floor to her and it's an honor to be able to close the hearing with her. Commissioner and President, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Vice President. First, I would like to apologize for not being able to be at the hearing because we have a presentation before the Permanent Council because of the International Human Rights Day and because there was also a farewell uh, from ambassadors and uh, to me. And sorry for not being here. I would have loved to listen to all of you with more attention, but uh, I would love to be here. But I just want to say goodbye. I would like to thank the support provided by Mexico at the Permanent Council over the last four years. I worked a lot with the state of Mexico, but also as Rapporteur for Memory, Truth and Justice. Uh, I would like to recognize the huge courage and resilience of the victims and the family members of disappeared persons. The work conducted by the Inter-American Commission wouldn't be possible without the support, the courage, the resilience of human rights defenders and especially in my view, I really admire those women and men that in spite of having lost a loved one, of being searching for a loved one, sometimes they spend years searching for justice and searching for their loved ones. They are here raising their voice, fighting in spite of the pain and the suffering. If there is a crime that is an atrocity is forced disappearing, disappearance of persons and you have the courage and that's the driving force for all of those who work in the area of human rights. I wanted to thank all of you because you are an inspiration for all of those who work in the area of human rights and I would like to take this opportunity to say goodbye because this hearing is a very symbolic hearing that things can be achieved. I would like to thank all of you and to send you a huge hug. Thank you for your courage. It must be too sad, too painful to search for a loved one. And you deserve justice. Not being able to say goodbye with dignity to them is too painful. That must be terrible. And you have to get up every day and to continue fighting. And I would like to express my admiration. Thank you and have a nice day. Thank you for your words, Commissioner. Thank you, Commissioner. They really touch our hearts. Thank you. A big hug to everybody.